Okay, hi everybody, my name is Sarah and today we are going to be taking a look at a new type of paper. This is B Paper Company's watercolor paper, their professional series, 100% cotton paper for watercolor, 6 by 9 inches, 140 pounds, or 300 GSM, and 25 sheets. And it says, it's from Beaverton, Oregon, made in Malaysia acid-free, archival quality, internally and externally sized, not sure what that means, cold press, maximum wet strength, paper of European origin and packaged in Malaysia. There's nothing on the back. And yeah, so this I thought might be a good, not really replacement for Arches paper, but a good supplement because Arches paper is very expensive. And this was $13 and change at Michael's without a coupon for um, 25 sheets. So we're going to open this now. And we are going to paint on this, but I thought I'd give my first impressions once I got it open. And I love cold press paper, but if that's not your thing, um, this may not be for you, but I love cold press. I don't know if I've actually ever painted on hot press watercolor paper. I might have. I don't know, I just like cold press and it seems to be easier to find than hot press. So we've got it open. Okay, so I'm gonna take a piece out. It's not like glued together like Arches is, but that's not really a big deal for me. I don't actually prefer that. It feels pretty thick. Um, it's got a nice texture. It's definitely a thick watercolor paper. It feels thinner than Arches watercolor paper, but honestly, I'm not sure because I don't have a piece to hand right now. It is all, like I said, in a block. You get, it looks like two pads of this. There's a piece of cardboard in the middle, but let me count. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. 9, 10, 11. So you get 12 in each half. And I'm not sure why they divided it up like that, but they did. Yeah, this is this. And I guess we'll get started with the test now. And the best way to decide if you like a paper, or any supply really, is to try it out. So that's what we're going to do. I had an idea for a galaxy kitty playing with a ball of yarn that looked like a planet. That's what I'm working on here. I used the B paper, of course, along with a single tube of M. Graham Payne's gray paint, and the rest are Winsor & Newton Cotman watercolors. At the end, I use a Faber-Castell Pitt Artist Pen for some additional outlining. The initial lines were done with a Sakura Pigma Micron Pen. I also used Dr. P. H. Martin's Frisket Mask Liquid for the stars in the fur and the shine in the eyes. The main reason that I was looking for another quality watercolor paper is that Arches, while great, is super expensive. And when I was painting less serious paintings, I wanted to have some slightly less pricey paper to work on. I also wanted paper I could experiment on without having a heart attack if the experiment went awry, as experiments tend to do. The paper is smaller than Arches at 6 by 9 inches, whereas the Arches paper is 7 by 10. So not a huge difference, but still it's smaller. I know I mentioned some of the new paper stats before, but I'll say them again in order to compare them to Arches. Both are cold press and 100% cotton. They are also both 300 GSM or 140 pounds. A 20 pack of Arches paper costs $27.99 US on michaels.com, whereas a pack of the B Paper Company paper is $13.49 for a pack of 25. If you do the math, Arches is $1.40 per sheet and the B paper is 54 cents per sheet. And that is obviously without a coupon of any kind. My experience with the paper was a good one. It allowed me to lay down a layer of water for wet on wet washes without major rippling or distortion. I was able to layer colors on top of each other to create the shade of the kitty's fur and the stripes in the ball of yarn or planet. I based it off of Saturn, so I wanted the stripes to be really visible and pretty. This was really what I wanted out of this new watercolor paper because from what I've seen, wood pulp based paper doesn't really allow for these techniques. So both Arches and B paper accomplish these effects to the same degree, at least to my eye, 
The liquid frisket didn't rip the paper either, which is something I have had issues with in the past, although that could be attributed to user error as much as the paper. Um, and the paper also took both sets of ink, the fine liners at the beginning and the pit artist pen at the end, great as well. All around, I really like the paper. I don't really have any world changing insights, sadly, but I do think that I've found for me a nice alternative to Arches paper if I want to paint something a little more casual or use supplies that are less expensive in case of accidents. Hopefully this will let me feel freer to explore and grow. Now that I've told you all about the paper, let's talk a little bit about the art. So as you can see, I spent some time working section by section to keep the paint from spreading between the blue and the yellow of the ball of yarn or the eyes or the ears even. And that worked for the most parts. I had a few different instances where it did overlap and spread, but that was mostly my own impatience, which you can only, you know, deal with as much as you can deal with. And I did several layers of the Payne's gray, which is what I used for the cat, just because I liked that dark gray blue to finish up the color. And then for the stripes on the planet, I initially tried to make them look kind of dingy brown because if you look at pictures of Saturn, they are brownish grayish, but I didn't really like the way it looked. You'll see um, I add a couple more layers of brown and eventually switch it over to a blue green just because I felt like it looked nicer. It didn't look as grubby, which is one really nice thing about this paper. I was able to paint over the brown. Well, it wasn't a very dark brown, which helps, but over the dirtyish yellow really easily with the blue eventually, or I guess it's technically green because blue plus yellow equals green, but you know what I mean. Um, and I think that really helped. And while Saturn in some pictures does have blue rings, for the most part it doesn't, but I figured I'd take a little bit of a creative liberty because the stripes are going in different directions, um, which isn't how a Saturn works in real life, but I wanted it to mimic the strands of yarn in the ball. And I really, really like how this turned out. Um, it took me a while to figure out how I wanted to draw a cat in my style, just because I wanted there to be enough that you could see that it was a cat, but at the same time, I wanted it to be mostly silhouette, kind of like you're looking into the void. So there really isn't a lot of detail with the legs. You can just kind of see where the paws end and stuff. And yeah, I did have a little bit of an issue getting the, the liquid frisket off of the eyes, as you can see, but I got it in the end. And then I went over it again for some stronger outlines to just kind of make it pop a little bit, which I'm really glad I did. I think that really helped. And that is about all that I have for my comments on this painting. It was just a little simple thing and I really enjoyed it. And I want to say thank you all for watching and I hope that you all have a super day. Bye!